All right, so imagine being abducted and you're part of a classified military program and you've been abducted by what you think to be our aliens, but it ends up being humans. And you knew at some point you were going to be abducted. You were told by a handful of soldiers that had come to your house a few weeks prior that at some point you were going to be abducted, but your family's been in the military. You've had, you know, a history of, of, of you know, uh, good genetics as part of the secret space program and the 20 and back and all that. And your family's been in the military, so it kind of looks good that they're going to be using you. And you think, okay, listen, I'm getting paid and I get free, like, tuition and stuff like that. As my friend Rumors of Instinct mes- mentioned a couple days ago as well, too, on our um, on our, uh, our Kraken conversations, the point of this is that you wake up from this abduction and you know you're told that you're going to have certain things cut open on your body but you'll be asleep the whole time you wake up and you see a handful of gray aliens and you kind of expected that you're not sure if you're awake or if you're dreaming but you kind of expected that what ends up happening is you then look up a little more you take your neck and your head have a little more strength than you had initially thought you look up and all of a sudden you see a massive massive what looks to be praying mantis right in front of you Right now, before I do that, I just want to say that I will be getting to more shout outs throughout the rest of this weekend. I do want to thank all of you for your patience on the shout outs. And I would like to thank everyone who has recently signed up for our Patreon. It's what keeps the show going. And on top of that, there's a lot of things we talk about there and that we analyze in terms of footage and things like that, too, that really would be very controversial or would get me banned publicly. So let's jump into it. Quantico 2, the insectoid reconnaissance apparatus very few are aware of now few stands for fear of extraterrestrial war and i know that sounds ridiculous but just bear with me when we take a look at the fact that ronald reagan had accidentally let it slip within a transcript in a meeting in the white house that the secret space program is legitimate and he said he goes and i quote he goes i can't believe we have 300 astronauts orbiting the galaxy right now end quote when did he say that and when have there been 300 humans in space At most, there's been like, what, 10 in the International Space Station? So he accidentally gave away that whole apparatus and secret operation right there. Reagan was one of the last presidents to be part of the secret shadow government that gave the go-ahead for the secret space program, which what they started initially doing was to get a bit of a... I guess we could say a head start against some of the oncoming threats, which we'll be discussing shortly, which are the insectoids. They actually use submarines, sort of like the Philadelphia experiment, to place magnetic barriers around the submarine in order to allow for this teleportation and this ability of using a secret space program ship to exist. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because Reagan then went on to say, unofficially, off the record, okay, which we can check on at Biblioteca Plates, but off the record, Reagan then said, but those goddamn insects, they scare the shit out of me, end quote. What, what's he talking about? Insects. There's only one race that we are publicly aware of, and, and even then, they try to cover it up, but there's only one race that we know of, which are the insectoids. Now, allegedly, the insectoids are bad news. Generally speaking, we know what a lot of the different gray aliens' purposes are, the Nordics, you name it. The gray aliens' purpose, in a lot of ways, I mean the smaller grays, I mean there are different factions, so I don't want to overgeneralize, but their purpose seems to be genetic experimentation, it also seems to be for the tall grays, they seem to be more self-serving, they're not exactly good news either, they're trying to get, you know, human souls into themselves, because that is something that they themselves are missing, and some of them are literal just vessels or robotic probes that are used to work for the tall whites of the Nordics. Then we have the tall whites, which are generally self-serving, They're kind of considered to be assholes. People confuse them with the Venusians. But then we have the Nordics, which or the Pleiadians, which generally try to help humanity to advance with a defense system of the secret space program and to excel and ascend spiritually. Now, there's a little bit, you know, uh, of politics involved in that. But let's take a look at BibliothecaPlates.net. And I quote, an an Italian investigative journalist believes he has found sufficient evidence to confirm the existence of a top secret Vatican organization. Now, just bear with me. You'll see why I bring up the Vatican shortly. Servizio Informazione del Vaticano. And I'm Italian, which is why I probably pronounce it pretty good, which stands for Vatican Intelligence Service. Now, before I go on, end quote, the Pope, not this Pope, the previous one kept mentioning SIV in his meetings. Okay, now if you flip that around in English, that stands for VIS. You know what's been occurring on recently crashed UFOs that people have had have been given a chance to get close to? They've seen an engraving on the metal of the UFO, which in what seems to be in English, written in, in English, V period I period S. 
All right. So uh, first off, we're trying to think here. Did the, does the Vatican even have a role in this? Now, here's the interesting thing. There is evidence to suggest that the Vatican, and we'll be going into this a little more on Patreon for those who, who are uh, who are members. The Vatican is partnered with certain insectoid beings that they have made deals with above or to the side of that of the Russian government, the American government, the Chinese government, the Israeli government. Now, I'm not saying this is 100% certain, but what we're finding more and more is that interdimensional ships, and I'm putting up some of the pictures right now, seem to keep entering Earth's orbit. And when you look closely at some of them, I kid you not, you can actually see not so much a humanoid figure, believe it or not, but an insectoid-like figure. And I know that sounds a little bit ridiculous, but just bear with me and we'll see a little bit more what, what's being referred to here now. Let's take a look, for example, at Gaia.com. Mantis aliens, right? So we have mythology, origin, characteristics, communication methods, and abilities. Now, here's the thing. Some experience experiencers state, and I quote, that the mantids are also shapeshifters and use advanced technologies to create a field around their bodies to make them appear human, end quote. Now, I would dare to argue there are a handful, I would say, well, handful, relative to the population of humans on Earth, there are probably... I would say anywhere from 5 to 20 million, I know that's a bit of a vague number, 5 to 20 million insectoids walking among us right now. Insectoids and the praying mantis types, I'm not trying to overgeneralize and say they're all bad, but they are not good news. Why? Let me, let me just say, guys, anytime you see a UFO where it looks like this UFO is not getting close to, to ground on Earth or anything like this, it's usually because they are overseeing a genetic operation or apparatus. Okay, and so what I want to do next is I want to refer all of you guys here to truedemocracyparty.net, insectoid aliens, the seven alien races here on Earth now. Now, what's interesting as well, too, is that you, we, we can play this video, but we're not going to. We're going to see that these insectoid aliens are slightly humanoid, humanoid based, but they're also uh, praying mantis looking. And the reason for this is because. A lot of the energy fields around them allow for a shape-shifting ability that, genetically speaking, would be comprised of a foundational aspect to be that of a reptilian sort of basis. Now, the insectoids have partnered with the reptilians to try to slowly but surely infiltrate that of the political human system. Now, at this point in time, the reptilians, and this is not really a reptilian episode, but the reptilians are on a bit of a losing, uh, they're on the losing side of the war, so to speak, and there's no going back. And what I mean by that is this. This is, again, thanks to my friend Rumors of Instinct, who privately has helped me clarify a lot of things as well, too. The Venusians have been assigned by the Galactic Federation to oversee Earth, which is why when we look at Valiant Thor and his crew, they spent a few years literally living at the Pentagon because they were trying to teach human beings that there are certain alien races that you should make contracts with and a few of them that you shouldn't. And the insectoids are the ones that you should not. Now, let's take a look here at timefordisclosure.com. Mantis or insectoid appearing beings have led the abductee experiencer phenomenon from the beginning of our modern day awareness of it. They appear to be at the higher, if not the highest end of the ET hierarchy, since they are most always described as overseeing or have a supervisory role in the abduction procedure process. This is the case, whether it is a medical procedure or human ET hybrid interaction, end quote. Now, they're overseeing things, but they are not allowed into the deep underground military bases. Humans don't like them. Reptilians know they have to keep them at bay. But the reptilians, in a lot of ways, are actually using a form of psychological warfare that we as humans have not simply evolved to the point of understanding. We think that psychological warfare and different forms of intelligence apparatuses have already been covered by the basic form of what's called OPE, Operational Preparation of the Environment. Okay, which is a basically an intelligence term for understanding the environment around you. But here's the thing. This is a okay. Sorry if I'm taking a pause. I'm just trying to really get this explain this as clearly clearly as I can. There's a, a, a way in which we perceive things because of the dimension that we live in. And, you know, uh, Anki and Enlil have explained this very well. You know, the Anunnaki, uh, the Hermetic Principles, as above, so below, the teachings of Thoth or Thoth. Um, and what we're seeing here is that the way in which we perceive things is geometrically aligned with the dimension that we're in. So if we, for example, were to go to a higher dimension, let's just say, right, and we were to head over to a a slightly ascended dimension, but we could still head back into this one through the use of some type of synthetically created technology that could bend space and time to allow us to descend. Again, we're not breaking the laws of physics, but we're bending them. If we can get into that dimension, what ends up happening is that we're going to notice a handful of different protocols taking place, and we'll see there that this type of energy is the same energy, by the way, that is used, that, the, that these insectoids use to blend in on Earth, which is also 
not all of it, but is a fraction of the same type of radiation as described to Ronald Reagan when CIA Director William Casey was kind of briefing Reagan within those transcripts on how these uh, extraterrestrial technologies work from their craft and what have you, right? Now, the thing here I want to I want to take a look at too is that Let's take a look again, according to timefordisclosure.com, regarding these unusual beings and these unusual circumstances, abduction researcher and licensed clinical social worker John Carpenter asked over two decades ago, why would anyone imagine a large bug directing uh, an abduction experience? Is this something we would hope for or desire to see? Subjects sense a higher level of wisdom and functioning in this type of entity. Whatever its purpose or origin, we certainly need uh, more studies. Now, what's also interesting as well, too, is that they, end quote, they are at the, the, the peak of the abduction apparatus, but they're not allowed into the dumb bases because they're, they don't have that level of trust with humans. They're extremely manipulative. Now, again, going back to before, when we look at the way in which things are geometrically aligned in terms of our thought, the cosmos aligns with the consciousness that you are currently awakened to at this very moment. And when I say the cosmos, I'm referring to the, the matrix or you know the mathematical apparatus all around us, right? And what we're seeing there is that our way of thinking is sadly limited not to the elite trying to suppress us. I mean, that's a whole other separate thing, but also because of the way in which we are geometrically formed in an energetic way. So if we do not understand the fact that we can in fact ascend to higher dimensions, whether it's spiritually through the use of remote viewing, astral projection, or through artificial uh, mechanisms and what have you, what will then end up happening is that if we notice this, we then to perceive, we then perceive, excuse me, different ways of how asymmetrical warfare could occur. Now, I know this is not the best way to think. The last thing you want to do is ascend to a higher dimension and start thinking about war, but this is the reality of the way things are. Now, a lot of the direct energy weapons that are used within major ceremonies that occur all around the world and things like this have to do with, and for those who are members, you'll know what I'm talking about here very, very well have to do with keeping the insectoids from doing their reconnaissance and from maintaining a sort of balance that may in fact destabilize the political hierarchy that the reptilians are trying to infiltrate. Now, to what extent have the reptilians been able to infiltrate, excuse me, it is hard to say. But let's take a look at bibliotecaplates.com because again, as I said a few minutes ago, the Vatican has aligned with these insectoids because the Vatican has been felt like they've been left behind. And this is typical just human nonsense drama, but the Vatican has felt like they have been left behind by major government institutions. So they not only feel the need to catch up, but they also feel the need to say, you know what, screw it. We're going to align ourselves with whoever we feel necessary in terms of extraterrestrial beings. Now, the Vatican also had a meeting with some of the world's top public scientists, astronomers, cosmologists, you name it, on the possibility of extraterrestrial life, and they privately came to the conclusion, as shown in the, uh, the um, unacknowledged documentary with Stephen Greer on Netflix, they privately came to the conclusion that there is a very good chance, I think it was something like 76% chance, that there's alien life out there. But here's the thing. Within that meeting, guess which what what uh, what private booklets, which only had one physical copy for each scientist, was handed out. Well, guess what it was labeled? V I S. Quantico I I. What does that tell you? That tells us a direct partnership between the Vatican and the insectoids is either imminent or it's already happened. But let's take a look here. And I quote, after the release of the controversial MJ-12 files and of the Guardian files by an anonymous individual, and perhaps for the first time in history, one member of the ufological community, an Italian freelance writer and investigator, was able to check the credentials of the alleged anonymous insider, an individual that was still working for the intelligence community and had not been fired or retired. This mystery man was responsible for the release of a, the above classified material. He was an insider of a presumed Vatican intelligence structure and his actions were supported by his colleagues. All right. For many years, he was also a member of the CUN, the Centro Ufologico Nazionale, the main Italian ufological association. All right. Now, here's the other thing as well, too. End quote. The Vatican has basically infiltrated certain UFO communities to try to deceive people or make them think they're on the right track. OK, and I'll be honest with you guys, that's kind of a little bit creepy because it just goes to show how close certain people like us are getting to the truth. You know what I mean? So ultimately, what we're going to find here is that and I quote, after one year of such an epistolary contacts, 
In the meantime, the insider re revealed himself as an SIV membership belonging to the Jesuit order and working by the Holy See. The Italian freelancer demanded a meeting with him with the contact as a necessary condition to carry on the contacts. In spite of the risks, the Vatican insider accepted, and I suppose he was aware it was necessary considering his baffling revelations. Two meetings took place in a public space in Rome, 2001. After that, at least his identity was clear. He was not a mythomaniac. He really was a Jesuit working by the Holy See. All right. Of course, the Italian freelancer has been protecting his source, avoiding to spread his name. And very soon, Barbado realized that he knew much more than what he had told him by email. End quote. Now, why is this significant? Let's take a look. Two meetings took place in a public space in Rome in 2001. You know what also took place in, in Rome in 2001 in, a, in two public spaces as well, too? An alleged interview with a reptilian named Errol. Right? You guys remember that? 2001. There was supposed to be another meeting. It didn't end up happening. So, could it have been an intelligence apparatus to fool or deceive certain human intelligence communities that were spying on the VIS because of the Vatican's intellectual and I guess we could say secret, uh, top, let's just say classified partnership? with these insectoids this is not good news now every single geneticist that attended this vatican meeting a few years ago privately as well to uh, the, the meeting i'm talking about with regards to the uh, on the unacknowledged documentary is also the same type of geneticist that has been called and used within the gate c17 experimentations and there are manifestos and records to prove that because the the same scientists that go attend these vatican meetings are the same ones going to cern and it seems like the cia is trying to infiltrate some of these scientists minds through the use of direct energy weapons that we spoke about again in the members only episode a couple days ago or a day ago depending when when i put this one out uh, put this episode out that seems to try to deter and infiltrate the minds of some of the people who are aware of the insectoid infiltration. This is not a rogue sort of civilization, the insectoids. They are an extremely advanced way of uh, operational thinking, and again, of utilizing OPE, operational preparation of the environment. It has also been argued that insectoids, the, the insectoid race, has filtered through certain information to the CIA and has kind of tipped them off in the same way that, uh, but deceived them by tipping them off, in the same way that the CIA will tip off a news source just to try to spread misinformation on purpose and the news source that they tipped off thinks that you know they got a good tip and they got a good story when really it's the cia tricking them the cia has been fooled by the insectoids as well you guys see what i'm saying so there's so much more here to cover but i think ultimately we have to understand and break down the energy these insectoids use to camouflage the alignments and agreements they've made with the vatican on top of that the mentioning of few again fear of extraterrestrial war which could in fact result in a direct or indirect ground war depending on which dimension this occurs in so i want all of you to let me know what you think and we will catch all of you tomorrow cheers